Okay, before looking in detail at some of the accessories that come with this, let's take a look at the camera first. The camera will record a 1080p at 30 frames a second or 720 at 60 frames a second. The field of view is the same when you're in 1080 and 720. In other words, it doesn't cut the frame down. Some of these mini DV cameras achieve their 60 frames a second by just duplicating every frame. In my test, I found a duplicated frame every fifth frame. So it's almost a genuine 60 frames a second. Movie format is in H.264, 16 by 9. Bit rate 15 megabytes a second, which equates to about 1.2 gigabytes for every 10 minutes. I recorded almost an hour and a half from a fully charged battery and that was 9.64 gigabytes so you will really need a 16 gig card to be sure of not running out of space. I had no problems when recording either on class 4 or class 10 cards. Camera body is very much like the C1 and C2 in that it's die cast aluminium has a nice solid feel about it. One major difference of course is the fact that there's no lens at the front because this is a bullet cam or snake cam but it's got the same three operating buttons along the top as a power on button, the mode change button and the shutter button. Power on, hold the button for three seconds and you'll see the red light come on. Um, mode button changes it between 1080 at 30 frames a second and 720 at 60 frames a second and stills mode. Front end you plug in the bullet cam. Um, you have a choice when you order of a 120 wide angle lens or a 90 degree standard lens. At the back end you've got a slot for the micro SD card and the socket that the USB charging lead plugs into. It's not a standard USB cable or mini USB, it's a cable that's su supplied specially for this camera. This is also the socket for plugging in the external mic that comes as an accessory. It's got the same slide switch on the side here which enables you to switch between loop recording if you're using it for a car cam and continuous recording if you're using it as a normal video camera plus the forward position of the switch turns on the LED light for kind of nighttime recording but I'd imagine that would only be good if you were close to a subject. There's also a little LED here which when it's turned on if you've got it set such will flash to show you that it's actually recording. So just to show you that press the power button for three seconds LED light comes on press the shutter button and the LED light is flashing I don't know whether you can see that to show you that it's actually recording press the shutter again and it turns off press and hold the power button three seconds and it will turn off. Now the bullet cam lead is, I haven't measured but it must be a good meter long at least um, and like I say the choice of two lenses, one is a 120 wide lens and the other is a 90 degree standard lens, I don't know whether you can see that there. And the body is metal, feels very very um, solid and it's also waterproof so I'm told by the manufacturer um, and designed to go into these little clips that um, come with the accessories various ki of various kinds but I'll go into that in a minute. What else have we got here? We've got the same kind of cradle that's supplied with a C1 and C2 for clipping the camera into. In this case it's for clipping the camera body. It has a clip on the back so you can clip it to your jacket or trousers. Um, plus also, if you unscrew that, underneath there, there is a quarter inch tripod mount. There's a handlebar mount, which has got this nifty little clip-in quarter inch mount tripod thing on it. Another little mount here, which you could stick on the side of a crash helmet, because it's got a sticky pad underneath, or alternatively, you could put a Velcro strap through and strap it to your arm, I guess. There's another little mount here, Again, it's a quarter inch mount, which would take this little clip so that if you're using it in the car as a loop recorder, car in car cam, 
you could put those two together, sticky pad, or alternatively, Velcro, Velcro sticky pad, both surfaces. This thing here is so that you can wear the bullet cam on your head. Fits on that way around. So the camera clips in here. You can swivel it up and down, round and round, quite comfortable. Um, and the snake cam lead would go around the back of your neck to the camera body. Also, we have an external mic that plugs into that special USB socket in the camera, a USB charging lead, the same as was used with the C1 and C2. Car charger, 12 volt car charger, and a long lead for you to use when you're using it for loop recording in the car. An AV lead, uh, the camera can also be used as a webcam. Okay, the manual, or well, in fact, it's more of a leaflet, all the same, um, quite thorough. I won't go into it in great detail, but uh, tells you how to charge, what the LED lights mean, uh, the diff cycling through the different modes, and so on. The standard when it's supplied, it, it's um, in 1080, um, and it will auto record when you turn on. If you use the G GUI, graphical user interface, that is downloadable from the Inov website. You can plug in and change settings so that it will not auto start. You can get rid of the date stamp. Uh, you can get it to start in 720. It has a time lapse mode. It has a loop recording mode. Okay, a bit more about the functions. I mentioned there's a parking mode. There's a built in G sensor. When the camera is left in car in G sensor mode, if there's an impact while it's parked, it will record. Um, this works independently of the 12 volt supply, apparently up to eight hours duration. Uh, there's a car loop mode for in-car recording. This does require the uh, 12 volt supply to be plugged in and it will auto start when it detects the power. Uh, there's a time lapse mode which you can set using the GUI. Uh, the other thing I found is if you plug the charge lead in when the camera is not plugged in you'll see the red light comes on so you need to press the power button and change it to yellow LED otherwise it won't actually be charging. Okay this is the head mount that's supplied with the camera. Bullet cam clips in here. The camera itself will rotate this way and this way. If you put the lead behind your head seems to be about the best place to run it. One thing I found I was necessary to stop the to stop it wiggling from side to side was a rubber band just around here which stops it moving like so. But um, apart from that it seems to be quite comfortable. But um, you see in the video that even with the bullet cam pushed right forward in the bracket um, it still with the 120 lens still caught the edge of my face in the video and and when I've tested even with the 90 degree lens you still get the edge of your face in I'm sure there's a way around this and of course if you're using it on a crash helmet the bracket actually holds it out further from your face so you wouldn't get the problem I keep mentioning the GUI which stands for graphical user interface which basically means the thing you plug the camera into in your computer to change the settings. Um, you can download it from the Inov website and it's very easy to use. You can enable or disable the date stamp, enable or disable the LED flashing to show that it's recording, enable disable power on record so that you have to press the shutter when you want it to record, enable disable video sound, Enable disable motion detect, change frequency, change TV mode, change photo size, change saturation, continuous shot so that when you fire the shutter it actually takes two or three shots, automatic night balance or day or night. Time lapse video which I explained earlier, video clip length, basically uh, clips are recorded in segments either five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, but there is an overlap. I've got mine set to 10 minutes 
uh, you can change the exposure value zero should be good enough but if they're slightly dark you can increase it and so on you've got video default size which decides whether it just starts in 1080 or 720 60 frames a second g sensor which is for parking mode probably best turned off unless you're actually intending to use it power off is how long it will sit on standby before it decides to turn itself off when you're not shooting um, shooting delay is you press the shutter um, and there may be a delay before it actually starts recording so that's pretty straightforward then you click create config file plug the camera into your PC and turn on and the camera should recognize it as an external drive save the file to the camera while it's still plugged in turn it off wait a couple of seconds turn it back on and you will see the LED flashing to show that it's updating the camera settings turn it off again unplug and the whole process should be completed just like that okay so this is the 120 degree lens Anyway, here's some footage from a mountain bike ride I did. Um, it was a pretty grey day and I wasn't expecting particularly good results, but it actually came out very sharp, very clear, um, and I'm sure on a good sunny day the colours would be much brighter. Cheers. Oh, that'll do. Well, this is what I did with the camera on my mountain bike ride. I put the camera just inside my jacket, which was useful because I could see the red flashing light and it was recording. Clipped the mic on here and uh, zipped up my jacket and it was, it was very comfortable, and very usable. Uh, one thing you probably notice, there's some clicking sounds on the video at certain places where I'm pedaling hard on the mountain bike. And I think it's because the mic was picking up rattling noises from the cable perhaps or from contact with the with the mic but of course you could also if you weren't wearing a jacket as this has got a clip on it you could clip it onto your belt here's how I uh, sorted the mount for my motorcycle ride this is the dash cam adapter self adhesive pad onto the helmet and so that you don't have to have this thing sticking out all the time this just slides in and out this little clip will screw onto the 
quarter inch mount and mounting it this way there's a thumb screw here to tighten it but mounting it this way you can rotate this way or you can rotate this way because there's a small notch sticking out on top of the bullet cam you can actually feel it on the top and you know whether the bullet cam is vertical in the mount. I must say at first I thought it was going to be a bit of a, a bit of a pain to use but it's more convenient than having a GoPro stuck on the side of your helmet. You can clip the camera here and you can clip the mic just inside your helmet here. So if you want to give a commentary it actually works very well. For my motorcycle test I tried a couple of mounts. I tried a flexible arm attached to the rear and also the helmet mount that I described just just before. Um, the tests weren't too successful really because for some peculiar reason uh, every time I started my motorbike engine the uh, camera stopped recording. Now uh, this may well be because it's a 1978 Honda um, but it does show the potential for using this camera on a motorcycle. The quality is extremely good, very sharp um, and it's just a bit of a shame it wouldn't work with my bike. Okay, and here's a bit of audio. This is just tucked inside my jacket. It's going to be in the pub in a minute to see how well it performs. All right, well, there's a bit of nighttime footage for you. And now into the pub. Thank you, yeah. I've done if I'm drinking though. Why is that? Have you got a joke? Um, because I'm testing a camera here. Oh, all right. Yeah, you might be on YouTube in a couple of years. Is that what for? Kind of for nothing. It's about 150 quid worth. All right. But one of them's been playing up. I've got two, I've got two bullet cams with it. One's wide angle. This one, so if I just stand here like this, looking as though I'm looking for people, get arrested. How are you, Simon? Anyway, I'll let it. This obviously, I won't oh, okay, just all yeah. be you going. Yeah, was, uh... Okay then. So having played with this for a few days, what do I think? Uh, I must say, when I first received a bullet cam, I wondered what the advantages would be over, say, a GoPro or an equivalent. But in fact, the bullet cam is much easier to mount and more discreet especially if you're doing something like mountain biking and sticking a GoPro on the side of your head. I think it offers more creative possibilities for mounting as well. Quality of the video, the sharpness from edge to edge, both lenses was very good. The colours are very vivid and very good. Price is good, it compares well to some of the other cheap GoPro copies that are on the market. Good little camera all around and with a choice of two lenses, which is also an added bonus. It's a shame I couldn't get it to work on my motorbike, but that may well be because it's such an old bike that it produces more electrical interference. But it worked really well on the mountain bike. Um, the low light performance was good. And um, I look forward to producing some videos paragliding if the weather improves in the next few days. So watch this space.